I'm a big boy now, but I still like my toys. Right now, we're gonna talk about all the best bits of equipment that every brewer should own. Starting with the diaphragm valve. So this chunky piece of metal looks complicated, but the concept is actually quite simple. There's a silicon bladder inside of this that the more you twist this closed, the more it pushes that silicon bladder down until it reaches a bridge that's inside of this, like a, a metal bridge in the middle. When the silicon bladder meets that bridge, it cuts off flow. And by the way, it's heat safe, it's chemical safe, and it's pressure safe. But the concept behind this is when you're trying to do a trub dump, instead of just opening up the butterfly valve and kind of having to dramatically open and close it as just beer starts gushing out of it, and I've seen so many hop explosions from people doing that, I've done the same thing myself. This thing here allows you to slowly open the flow only a bit at a time and then close it off under control, even under pressure, so that you don't end up getting bukkake by hops. <laughs> Beep that out if I'm not allowed to say it. I don't know if YouTube likes that, but that's the concept of a diaphragm valve. Highly recommend getting one, top of the list of all the things I'm gonna talk about. Next up is the thing that I affectionately call my brewer's vibrator. <laughs> Can you hear it? <laughs> the, the reason why this is on the list is because it's an aeration device effectively. So this is just an aquarium air pump. This here is a carbonation stone slash aeration stone, whatever you want to call it. It's basically a uh, piece of stainless steel, with very tiny perforations in it. So only micro amounts of air can get pushed through it. This allows you to dip this tube into, wrong way, this tube into your wort after a brew day, turn on the pump, and then you're gonna aerate the wort. You could do the same thing with a paint mixer. This is a little more effective because you get a lot more dissolved oxygen inside your wort, which is super critical for the first phase of fermentation. Paint mixer. So, <laughs> that was dumb. But paint mixers, as I just mentioned, you can aerate wort with a paint mixer, basically by giving it a giant blitz after a brew day. It's useful, aeration stone does a better job of aerating, can be done with these though. But the other really key benefit of paint mixers is if you're doing a very heavy grain bill with a ton of grains and not a lot of water ratio, these are so much easier to mash in with. So we've done a few brew days where on camera, I've mashed in using a paint mixer, especially like a big, big stout or a big hazy IPA, because sometimes the mash paddle just struggles to cut through all of it and you get tired, whereas the paint mixer just blitzes through all that grains, gets rid of all the possible dough balls, and you've got maximum efficiency on brew day. I've got two different types here. This is one that I got from a hardware store, Bunnings for the Aussies down here. This is one that I got from Kegland. Uh, look, to be honest, I kind of don't mind either one. I actually kind of prefer this one if I'm being super honest. It kind of does a better job of just kind of getting through all the grains, just being a little bit bigger. The idea behind this one is because it's rounded off like this, it won't scratch the walls of your boiler as much as something like this will, but you know, up to you. Any paint mix is gonna do the job. Next up, CIP spray balls. We've got, you know, the big commercial one we connect up with the huge pump for things like this tank or this tank here. But for things like cleaning your brewzilla or your boiler or your, just your kettles after brew days, having a smaller CIP system is super, super useful. So this one here, for example, can literally just plug into this with its cam locks, close it down, and using the inbuilt pump, I can recirculate caustics and acids and at high temperature throughout my equipment and then it cleans it really really easily with effectively zero elbow grease and zero scrubbing see our cleaning video with a tag up there for how all of that stuff works but that's not to say this is the only one you can use i just mean get some kind of a cip system because man cleaning is easier when you've got the equipment working for you and you're not just scrubbing it by hand so spray balls or mini spray balls super super useful Bonus equipment, gear. If you wanna make the best beer possible, you need to be wearing the best brew gear possible. So jump over to our website and get yourself some sick Wombat merch today. Not only will you look cooler, but you make better beer too. Maybe. <laughs> Next up, pressure regulation. These things here are basically the same as this thing right here, except this is built for more commercial purposes. It sits on a uni tank, it's all stainless steel, but the concept is the same. It's all about being able to control how much gas is leaving your vessel at any given moment. 
So this one here is very elegant, small, and quite frankly, just sexy from Keg King. So this is the one from Keg Land. Same concept, just bigger, bulkier, and less pretty. But the concept works the same way. If I want to whack this onto the Keg King snub nose here, for example, I can now see this is sitting at seven PSI, and I can twist and tighten this to control how much gas is exiting the system. So if I'm fermenting a lager in the middle of an Australian summer and I don't have temperature control, I can keep this at say 15 PSI and I can reduce off flavors. It also means that if I wanted to transfer this beer into the keg, I can pop this on the keg outlet post so that when I do start pushing gas into this to push that beer over into the keg, I can do so under pressure and I'm not losing any carbonation during an inline keg transfer. Also means zero oxygen. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening to this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. But this isn't a microphone. This is a sparge distributor. So this one here is from Kegland. They call it Sergeant Sparge Head, linked down below. But you can get these from a number of different places. What it is is effectively a 3D printed piece of plastic that distributes liquid more evenly across the surface below it. So if you were, for example, mashing and you were just recirculating your mash and your wort, this would more evenly distribute that wort over your grain bed so that you uh, get better efficiency and you also disturb that grain bed less so that you have a better clarity of wort. You could then also use it if you're pumping sparge water from another device through this on top of your mash after you're uh, starting to sparge, it will distribute that hot liquor sparge water more evenly and again, disturbs the grain bed less, gets better efficiency with your sparging. So one of these, very cheap, very useful. Next up, vacuum sealers and grain tubs. We're gonna combine this one for the sake of keeping the video shorter and also I don't have a vacuum sealer, <laughs> but I really want one. <laughs> so. A vacuum sealer basically is that, that thing that kind of sucks all the air out of that you know piece of plastic after you filled something in it, and then it seals it tight. So, especially useful for hops or yeasts or things like that. I really want one for hops because after you've got a beautiful fresh hop, like say an Amarillo or a Galaxy or something, and you want to keep it that way, it's very hard when it's being exposed to air, and you know you can Ziploc bag and all that kind of stuff, but it's already got so much air inside it. So the better way to do that to keep your hops fresh would be to, when you receive your, your hops in bulk, you chop it up into different amounts and then put it into your different vacuum seal bags and then you can use them when you want them and they stay completely fresh while you keep them in the freezer. Along the same veins are grain tubs. So this one's not airtight, it's not like a vacuum seal bag, but what it is, is pretty tight at keeping all different kinds of critters out. So all different kinds of moths, of weevils, of flies, all that sort of stuff. It keeps your grain fresher for longer and uh, it keeps the pests out of it. So you could use it like this for your base malts, for example, but you can also use it if you've got a bunch of different specialties, which you normally buy in one kilo, five kilo style bags, you will have them in the plastic bags, you kind of put like a peg on them or clamp them or whatever, but they're not super protected. Moths and stuff can still get through that stuff. So if you throw them in a big tub like this, they're just better protected. It only makes sense. Thank you very much for watching this latest video. And um, if you have any pieces of equipment that you use or anything you've seen in any of my videos that you wanna know what it is or how it works, please drop comments down below. I'm always on the lookout for new gadgets. So if you've got a really cool thing that you've been using, please tell me, I wanna know about it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always guys, we're on. Catch you next time.